Recently, Congress set a goal for cellulosic biofuel production, 22 billion gallons. The USDA projects that the Southeast, with its natural diversity and its long growing season, will produce half of that total, nearly 11 billion gallons. The liquid fuel producers will build the refineries if they know there's a reliable supply of feedstock at the right price. The farmers will grow the feedstock if there's enough demand at the right price. What separates the parties is risk. So how do we overcome this risk? By demonstrating that it's manageable. The IBIS partnership is in a position to do just that. Among our partners, we've got decades of experience and millions in funded research behind us. We've assembled a team to address the range of issues we'll likely encounter. Genetics, planting and growing, harvesting, transportation and storage, workforce certification and training, the development and management of assessment data, and the economic and environmental sustainability of the whole system. We've got the expertise to design this new industry quite literally from the ground up. Farmers are businessmen. They'll plant the switchgrass or the sorghum or the trees if they can make money on the product. What I need as a landowner is uh, some improved genetics to get the tonnage that gives me enough tons out there in a short period of time where I've got, uh, I've got enough to make it economically feasible, not only for me as a landowner, but for the logger to, uh, to harvest. For biofuels, those farmers must have a product that can grow cheaply and quickly that yields the necessary tonnage per acre and that has the proper chemistry for fuel production. Right now those products haven't been perfected but we're well on our way to designing them. And we'll test those designs across the different climates and soil types of the southeast and develop the new standards and practices for the emerging biofuels industry. We know that feedstock will have specific requirements for harvesting, processing, transportation and storage but again, given enough demand, harvesters and transporters will invest in the new methods and equipment. And again, IBIS has the skill to design the new systems for the future and the know-how to train the workforce to operate them. Each different source is probably going to have a unique collection and harvesting uh, and transportation system to optimize it. And our industry is not well enough refined right now to know all which all of those are. We're struggling with how to put the pieces together and resolve what they are. But yes, there's going to be, there's going to have to be optimization in the equipment world, changes, and ultimately unique machinery and systems to match situations will be the lowest cost alternative. In the southeast, we have some 83 million acres of cropland and pasture, 30 million acres of plantation pine, and 183 million acres of forest land. Converting even a portion of this land to biofuel feedstock will have a significant impact. For the growers, the harvesters, and the liquid fuel producers, and all of us who live here, issues of sustainability are paramount. Not only does the IBIS partnership address this impact, we understand the need to speak to public perception and cultural values. A great aspect of this project is to develop a robust infrastructure to be able to support bringing materials from the ag lands or the woods into the areas where these products are needed. To meet our fuel production goal, we need to show that the risks involved are manageable and that the return on investment is worthwhile. Our systems approach will demonstrate that the Southeast can reliably, sustainably supply affordable feedstock and that we can build a viable biofuels industry.